Summer Storm. In that so sudden summer storm, they tried each bed, couch, closet, carpet, car seat, table, both river banks, five fields, a mountainside, covering as much ground as they were able. A lady coming on them in the dark in a white fixture wrote to the newspapers complaining of the statues in the park by Cupid, but they cut some pretty capers. The envious oxen in still rings would stand ruminating. Their sweet incessant ploughs, I think, had changed the contours of the land and made too modest conies move their house. God rest them well and firmly shut the door. Now they are married, nature breathes once more. The Lover's Ghost I fear the headless man whose military scars proclaim his merit, and yet I fear a woman more than the ghost of Mars, a wounded spirit. That look, all kindness lost, cold hands as cold as stone, a wanton gesture. What do you want, old ghost? How long must I atone? So I addressed her. Did you not call, she said? Goodbye, then, for I go where I am wanted. Till dawn I tossed in bed, wishing that I could know who else she haunted. Sleeping Beauty Where is your lady when she's sleeping with the pale charms of stillness on? She walks with Helen, perhaps, and Thais. Where is she now, the vanished one? The calm and quiet of sleeping faces is like the silence of Babylon, and she may wander the strange world under with many a pale companion. Her star enchantments are strong and holy, her far enchantments are weird and wan and only music, immortal music, will reach your lady where she has gone. The Death of Love Before they leave, the lovers hover and look again that no clue in the clover discover where they've lain. Deeper than rain, their love is covered over. But they must come together above the deep disgrace and April's sunny weather reveals love's murdered face. They feel the place he hit them with a feather. From where his course is lying, their flying course they shape. While angels follow crying, shall criminals escape? Till from a cape they plunge and sink down sighing. Love's funeral requires a lyrical instrument. A hollow heart with wires will make the wind lament. The wreath I've sent is roses wrapped with briars. Invitation to a Quiet Life Come, Amaryllis, let us go to see the moving picture show where the small people closely pressed walk all together in their best. The angels and a taxi shall take us to Times Square. From his stall, the cripple sells us several views of what is playing. Let us choose some gay melodic musical. But first, flock to the seasonal sheep sharing in the Great White Way, where thousands sacrifice their pay in groves to oracles and pass gazing at goddesses in glass. Here every beauty on parade compares the compromise she's made, and former school friends, when they meet, look down and fidget on their feet. Then, Amaryllis, we shall be equal to our society. A sultan's storytelling wife once played a one-night stand for life. These Sherazades sing to please, showing their talent or their knees. One thousand nights, and if she cracks... What does an actress get? The axe. Here Cinderella, pumpkin tripper, tosses now a married slipper.
She strides her bar stool like a throne. The wicked sisters drink alone. Since sin requires some expense, our income is our innocence. We gain, but then we borrow more, become dependent on the law. Like lilies clothed, like pigeons fed, we woo and by installments wed. In penny arcades, bowling, beer, and dancing we shall pass the year. Then nymph with inky fingertips, type me six copies of your lips. Some day we'll poster in a plane to the Bahamas or to Maine, and pat the minutes with our hands into castles on the sands, watching white argosies of gulls, and the long shark haunt the hulls, and split with springing steel a log to the approval of the dog, grow ever greener in the Greek religion of a good physique. It seems the gentle and the human become an office man or woman, and hundreds at the Hudson stand who've lost hereditary land, not by a Mississippi flood, but in a slower sea of mud. Youth fades, the hockey hero's laugh is fixed as in a photograph, forgotten what enormous rage bore us like soldiers to the stage. Since, Amaryllis, you and I adore an advertising sky and find it happiness to stare at the enchantments of thin air, let us go in and not regret the endings that we never met but in security applaud the ecstasies we can't afford. So shall we manage till the day death takes the furniture away.